Another very important factor to consider during keyword research and selection is the meaning and the broadness of your keywords. Let's take a look at a few examples. First, there are words that have multiple meanings, such as jaguar, which could mean the car or the wild animal. There is football, which could mean American football, or soccer, which is also called football in European and South American countries. And Frank, which could be someone's first name or another name for a hot dog. Google over the last few years has become very good at being able to know what results to display to users, even if a word has multiple meanings. Next, consider if your keyword is too broad, or in some cases too generic. A word like auto can mean a variety of things, such as auto repair, auto parts, or auto sales. The same holds true for the next few examples, cleaning and presentations. This is one of the reasons why using single word keywords isn't always the best idea, unless it's the name of your company. Finally, consider the singularity or plurality of your keywords. For example, the word pant has a completely different meaning than the word pants. The word pant means to breathe hard and quickly, while the word pants refers to the article of clothing that we all wear. The same holds true for shade and shades, and clip and clips. Shade could mean a lampshade, or where you would get away from direct sunlight, while shades can refer to sunglasses. Clip can either mean to cut something or someone off, or can stand for a video or an audio clip, while clips could refer to rifle or weapon ammunition. So take the time in selecting your keywords and make sure that they mean what you want them to mean in the context that you're looking for as well. Finally, consider the traffic volume of a specific keyword. In this example, we've used Google Trends and we're looking at the search volume trends of the last three years of three different keywords, brown shoes, black shoes, and white shoes. Knowing the volume of traffic that keywords are able to generate plays another critical part in what keywords you ultimately choose and the language that you ultimately wind up using on your website. However, many marketers spend entirely too much time and focus their SEO efforts entirely too much on traffic volume. They simply select the highest volume keywords and go with those without taking anything else into consideration. Choosing keywords solely on traffic volume is fool's gold and will not bring you any quality or relevant results. Therefore, we'd like to remind you that traffic volume isn't everything. Consider all of the aspects of keyword research and selection that we've just gone over very carefully before doing anything on your website. You will save yourself a lot of aggravation and trouble later on if you take the time to prepare everything correctly right away. Choosing your keywords can seem confusing and can seem like picking a needle out of a haystack, but it doesn't have to be. Just keep the five factors from the last few slides fresh in your mind as you're picking out the keywords that work the best for you and your website. In this particular example, we're looking for keywords that are closely related to either new auto parts or used auto parts. Once we've collected several keywords, we can select the few keywords that very closely match what's most relevant to our site. As you can also see, we could potentially take our keyword selection in several different directions, as there are multiple keyword combinations to pick from. Keyword research and selection can also be a great exercise in considering new pages for your website, as it brings about new ideas to expand upon. There are several keyword research tools online that you can use that will generate large keyword lists like this one. Try not to be overwhelmed by the results, just take your time and be as picky as possible when choosing your keywords. In the search engine optimization world, keywords are generally considered one of two types, short tail keywords and long tail keywords. Short tail keywords are generally one or two keywords in length, much like our examples are showing you. Keywords like digital cameras, digital phone, and TV Guide would definitely be considered by most everyone as a short tail keyword. Long tail keywords are generally much larger in size, ranging from four to six or even more words in length. A keyword like T-Mobile Sidekick LX Cellular Phone is definitely considered a long tail keyword. Being aware of short tail and long tail keywords is important for a few reasons. 
you must seriously consider what types of keywords you will be using to target your pages, a topic that we'll cover more in depth a little later on this afternoon. It's critical for the success of your website that the keywords are found on the proper pages of your website. Short tail keywords should generally be used for the home page and possibly a category level page of your website. If, for example, you sell a wide variety of digital cameras and you carry several different models of digital cameras, it makes more sense to use words like digital cameras on the higher level pages of your website. As a user who types in digital cameras into a search engine, could be looking for any number of models or makes. Long tail keywords should generally be used for the individual specific pages of your website. Carrying on with our digital cameras example, a long tailed word like Sony Cybershot W170 digital cameras should be used on the specific page that talks about the Cybershot W170 specifically. Also keep in mind that short tail keywords generate most of the volume of the searches on the web while long tail keywords account for a small percentage of all searches performed in search engines. So while long tail keywords could bring you very little volume of traffic, it will most likely bring you very highly qualified traffic. Conversely, short tail keywords could bring you a very high volume of traffic, but at a low quality. So it's very important to have both types of